From space, the Earth is small and a luminescence blue. It requires protection, though, and someone to make sure it will be viable for future generations. Mindy Luber, tonight's honoree, is that someone. She has dedicated her life's work to solving the world's greatest sustainability challenges and preserving our environment. Mindy Luber is not only a United Nations champion of the Earth, she's also a genius. She has the path-breaking insight that she's been messaging to the world that unless we achieve global financial system reform, we will not avoid climate calamity. Mindy is unparalleled in her ability to not only understand the big picture, but to work with the various players that are critical to actually changing behavior. She understands how to uh, give a little, take more, uh, how to bring people together. Mindy is the president and CEO of Ceres, a Boston-based organization that works with the most influential capital market leaders to transform the economy and build a sustainable future for our planet and its people. You know, nobody, I think, in my opinion, has done more for this movement than uh, Mindy and Ceres, and really there's no real way to separate the two. I mean. Series is Mindy uh, in many ways, and um, it's just been a real pleasure to know her and to work with her. The expertise of Mindy and the Series team has made them an invaluable resource to companies like Apple, Akamai, Ford, Coca Cola, and the Walt Disney Corporation, among others. Well, I think you know, the, the the magic about uh, Mindy is, uh, is is number one her relationships. She knows everybody, um, and she's respected by everybody. And she's just such a, a great sounding board and she has a great way about her. Uh, she listens uh, and she advises and she's practical. Let's not also forget that Mindy runs a all woman led organization uh, and she has done so, I think she's been at the helm of this organization now for almost 20 years, like it's, it is 20 years this year. Uh, she has grown this organization 80 fold during that time frame, while tackling some of the more, most important issues in the world, let alone the city. Mindy's mission is to get big business to succeed, but also respect that we need to embrace the delicate balance of climate mitigation and profits. You know, Mindy is a tremendous you know, advocate for the planet, and she knows how to speak with business leaders well. Um, she's an advisor, a consultant, but not a preacher which makes her extraordinarily effective. One of Mindy's key contributions is helping others to understand that climate change is here and will be impactful. And we need to adjust or adapt to climate change while also working on mitigating climate change over the longer term. So she raises awareness. She helps people understand it through their own lenses and in their own terms and helps them understand why it's important for them to incorporate it into their work. And by doing all of that, she's helping us, the economy, Boston, cities, government, to navigate to a better future. She finds a way to, to, to work together. Um, and uh, so, for example, she's a good advocate in Washington for intelligent regulation. You know, I think regulation is, is needed, but to, if there's too much regulation or um, ineffective regulation, it can backfire. It can have unintended consequences and can move, if you will, business against, you know, and others, you know, fighting something that they really support if the regulation is wrong. And I think Mindy has been a great advisor in Washington in trying to bring, we'll call it business interests in a responsible way and government's interests from a regulatory perspective together. Mindy's motivation is clear. She is working hard for future generations. She truly embraces the quote, we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. Now, at the core of it, what she cares most about is her kids and the world that they're going to inherit and the world that their kids are going to inherit. The reality is, is it is people like her who are making this the city that it is and will continue to be. She really cares. She often says that to fail to fight climate is the equivalent of 
not stepping in front of an oncoming bus and pushing everyone to safety. She's really literal about this. That's how personal it is for her. And what else could we expect from a climate champion? For the health of future generations and the planet that they will inherit, Mindy Luber is indeed our champion. Well, that was alarming um, and really very gracious. So to the people who prepared that video, I chose not to watch it um, until I got here, and what a nice surprise. So thank you all from your organization. Thank you to all the friends in the audience, uh, and it's great to be here. And I, I would advise you not to believe a word you heard, um, because I do try and bring people together, and I'll talk about it just a lot or a bit. Um, but in the end, we've got to push and push ourselves and push each other and push companies and investors, policymakers. We do have an existential threat in climate change. And it is about not only my kids, Abe and Jesse, who some of you know I used to drag from speech to speech when I was at the EPA. Um, they're now 27 and 32. I don't think I'd be, they'd want to be dragged around. Um, but we want to build a world where we can look at our kids and believe we have given them something that's healthy, that's safe, that makes a difference, and that they could prosper in. Right now, we are not totally on track to do that. It will take all of us. It will take business and investors, policymakers, re regulators to come together. We need to depoliticize it. Why is climate change that if we look at an economic measure, it's costing us hundreds of billions of dollars this year? if you look at Pakistan and Puerto Rico and Florida and Texas and California. It is an economic crisis. It's, of course, a planetary crisis. We all know that. And it is a human crisis. Not tomorrow, but today. And a lot is moving forward. I see it every day with 150 or so companies we work with, where we train their corporate boards. We work with them to develop a climate action plan from Amazon to Apple to General Motors and Ford. There is a commitment to move, to get to that so-called net zero future. It's just not moving quite fast enough. Or with the 600 investors we work with who are analyzing climate risk as a financial risk to their portfolios and prevailing on the companies in their portfolios to act, to change, to do more, we're seeing change. It's just not quite fast enough. Or the regulators, the SEC, literally today taking up one more time, a draft rule on mandatory climate risk disclosure. 17,000 comments on a draft rule, almost as much as Dodd-Frank, saying, well, we don't want to move too fast, we want to move slow, not a great thing. But regulators are looking at it, whether it's the Federal Reserve or the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, or look at the year we just had in policy, both state level, but think about in the US, we passed the, investment, the Investor Reduction Act, $369 billion for climate, 40% of that for communities that have been harmed the most. $3 trillion with a T for infrastructure changes. We need to make sure those dollars are acting in the best interest of all the things that every single person in this room cares about. I'll say the following. I'm getting a little bit too much over the last year. Let's be reasonable. Let's be practical. Let's realize there is a war and it is making our energy system far more difficult. My answer is that's absolutely true. And if we had a practical problem bearing down on us and a reasonable problem that we could talk to or deal with, that would be the right answer. But we have to be audacious. We have to be impractical. We have to be unreasonable in what we expect, where we go, and the pace at which we move. The message is out there. We do have to get it out of the political crisis and into the reality of our kids' future and our economy's future. But we need to move out of the let's be reasonable and into we must do this. This really is about that bus that Amy mentioned in the video coming at our kids. And we either let it come at our kids or we jump in front and stop it. And we know we would do that with a bus. We know we can do it with climate. It's not going to be easy. 
It'll be technology changes, policy changes. It will be all of those private sector companies we're working with and the stock exchanges. We're working to change rules and regulations. But we have to move faster, whether it's housing or transportation, automobiles, roads, whether it's electricity. Now is the time to double down, to think about what that looks like. And I will say, the people in this room know how to do it. You've done it before. Each of you are about integrating sustainability into capital markets or building a better world and making it clear these are not separate things, these are one thing. You know, the future is not something we enter into. The future is something we create. We create together. Let's make it happen. It is doable, it is difficult, it is impractical. But we have got to get to that net zero future. We've got to move our resources, our energy mix, our housing mix. It can be done. It'll take every one of us. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you're doing.